Okay, so this is part two of the uh, shutter speed project, the pinwheel skeleton notes. This is, uh, we're gonna be doing the Photoshop portion of this. Make sure that we're recording, good to go. Okay, here we go, this is part two of the, the shutter speed project. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we just took our images and we've uh, inserted our SD card into the computer. So one is, once in Photoshop, click on file in the menu bar at the top left hand corner of the screen and click on new, so file, new, or you can hit the keyboard uh, shortcut command N. I like to use um, keyboard shortcuts whenever possible. And it's gonna bring the new dialog box up, so new document. And then we have to put in some parameters here. Okay, or you okay, once the new dialog box appears, title your project like this. The name of the project, the date, and your initials. So this is the shutter speed project. And we do this Twitter style. So no uh, no spaces. Shutter speed project. Your name, the date, so this is 03 and 25 19. My son's birthday. Happy birthday, Hawk. And your initials. The reason we do this, this is a standard we use within the class, is we want to have it broken into three search parameters. So once you start getting into photography, you're going to be working with hundreds of thousands of files. So if you're looking for one specific file, this gives you three ways in which to identify it. I can look for it by the name of the project or the event. I can look at it by the date. I can even go by the year, just 2019. Look at everything from that year, or break it down by the month. Or I can look at it, all the pictures that I took. So putting my initials in, I can search it by the initials JB. Does that make sense? So it gives you three ways in which to go back and reference material that you've created over the years. On average, I take about 150 to 200,000 images a year. So that's a lot to manage. So having a system to do that, and we really get more than this in the photo too, as well. All right. So number, moving on. Okay, quick note, be sure to never use any special characters like backslashes, some are uh, dashes or, um, what is that, an asterisk? Just, just straight up, just numbers, letters, and spaces. That's it, okay? No spaces. Uh, no spaces, yes. But if you have to put a space, spaces are okay. Okay, set the width to 11 inches. This is important that you make sure that this says inches right here. Many times scholars will have it on pixels and not realize it. And they'll be like, Mr. Byrne, it's really small. I can't see it. Um, make sure it says inches. The height to 8.5 inches. Add the resolution to 300 pixels slash inches. And the background content's too transparent. Now, if you get in here and you can't see, it says white, black, and background color, you're like, I don't see transparent. You have to scroll with the mouse. There it is, transparent. I know, it's hiding. And then you click on create or okay, depending on which version of Photoshop you're using. Okay, now we have a blank canvas. Okay, you're gonna insert your SD card into the SD card slot on the, on the iMac, or you're gonna have to use a card reader if you're using the PC. Be sure to eyeball it and insert it into the proper slot. So I don't wanna be fishing your SD card out of the CD drive slot. So I taped over the CD card slots just for that case. So uh, just make sure you physically look before you put your card in, please. Once you've done that, use the keyboard shortcut Command O. It should bring up the open dialog box, Command O. Locate your images under the devices. So right here we have devices. There's my SD card. DCMI. Canon 100. And those first three images are the images that I'm concerned with. Okay. Actually, I, I lied. These, these three images. That was the, the really fast lens. Okay, then click on open. Next, you need to rotate your images. Select image. So from the options menu at the top, we have image. Oh, we don't need to rotate them. Outstanding. Okay, very good. So if you need to rotate them, you go to image, image rotation, and then you can rotate them left or right this way. Looks like the camera compensated for us, so we're good with that. Okay, all your three images will be open. It is time to crop them. Select the crop tool right here. The crop tool. Okay. 
from the, this is your, your toolbox over here on the left-hand side of the screen. Crop your image to 3.5 inches by hitting tab to switch fields there. Four inches with a resolution of 300. Okay, you're gonna have to move this a little bit on this one. Oop, let's go backwards. Command Z to step backwards. All right, so I'm gonna move this down a little bit. Making sure we're centered here. There you go. Enter. All right, so I'm gonna crop all three images like just like that. zoom in here a little so I get a little fine control here there we go enter crop this one okay now my all, now all three now all three images are cropped there's a little picture in your notes for you that kind of show you it needs to be set to width times height times resolution so right here you see this drop down box that's this should be chosen some of you discovered this last project so make sure that this is I put it in there just so you know uh, make sure that that is selected so if you don't have the resolution option that is why so maybe put a little star next to that check that all right crop, e crop each image then by using the move tool keyboard shortcut V Drag each image to your canvas. You're gonna do a, the hover and drop technique that you used in the last project. All three of the images should now be on your blank canvas. So let's do that. So I'm gonna start over here. I'm gonna grab this image, pull it in, drop, go to the next one, drag, drop, and then my third image, drag and drop. Okay, it is now time. So once we have this in there, we want to have our images go from our sharp image. I'm sorry, from our blurry image. We're gonna flip these two. Center this one. And you, the, if you have your guidelines turned on, it'll help you place these items. And your, if you turn the show transform controls at the top here, if you have that checked, it will put the bounding box so you can even see a little a little more clearly where everything is. So get everything nice and lined up here. There we go. All right, I'm gonna use the click shift. Remember we did this last time, or shift click. So I'm, this one's selected, I'm gonna hold down shift and then click here. Now all three images are selected. I'm gonna center this on the page. So we wanna get our left and right, enter up and down. Let's zoom in here a little bit. Let's see, let's get her up and down first. There it was. And then our left and right. Hmm. Should be pretty close there. There it is. Very sensitive. Okay, guys, when you're doing this, I am looking for this detail, okay? I wanna see good margins. So you take the time to do this right, get your left and your right. And we want to see those purple lines when you're doing this. There's up and down. Great. Oh, so close. Right there. Okay, so now we know that it's perfectly centered on the page, right? And that's what I'm going to be looking for. So I should see margins at the top and the bottom the same and your left and right. Okay, so now that we have everything in place, it is now time to add text. Locate the text tool from the um, toolbox. So keyboard shortcut T. Choose the font New or Times New Roman. So go to the top here, and the quickest way to do it is just highlight it and type in T I M, and it should pop right up. Times New Roman. Let's go regular with a font size of sixty. Okay, above the pinwheels, add your name and period. So we are going to add Han Solo. And you can choose whichever color font you use. I really don't care. I'm gonna use black just because it's simple. Your name and then 
period one in this case. All right, again, you're going to center this. So this is not in your notes, so make sure you write this in there. You want to center this on the, the page as well. And just give it about equal distance. So, All right, and then the next step is, now you're going to add the shutter speed underneath each image. So in this case, we have, so you're going to need to hit text again. What was the first one? One fifth of a second, right? And then click on the move tool and you're going to position that right underneath the image, okay? And then the, grab the text tool again. What was the next speed? One eightieth. And using the key, the move tool again, line it up. And those guides, turn your guides on. It'll help you line this up. Place it right underneath that. There we go. Right there. All right. And then the last one is one three hundred and twentieth. All right. Okay, it's now time to save your project and turn it in. Hit Command S on the keyboard and save the dialog and the new. And the, I'm sorry, and the Save As dialog box will appear. So Command N. I'm sorry, Command S. Let me escape out of that. There you go. Save As dialog box. If you titled it correctly in the front end, it should automatically be titled correctly on the back end. Just a little side note, I highly, highly, highly recommend, you do not have to do this though, that you do save a PSD version of this project into your onto your thumb drive, your USB drive, so that way if something happens, you can always go back and reference it later, right? Otherwise, you're gonna have to start from scratch. All right, but we're going to change the format to, so keyboard shortcut, Title correctly, okay. Uh, choose a flash drive as the where. So your where is going to be your thumb drive. So in this case, we'll put it back onto the SD card, but you should have it into your thumb drive. Change the format to JPEG. Okay, once you've done this, it'll prompt you to choose a quality. So once you click save, it's gonna bring your JPEG options up. Choose the quality as 12, and then select OK. The last step is to turn it into Google Classroom under the Shutter Speed project. But let's go take a quick look at our final product here. So it's going to be under No Name. There it is. And there's our project. So we can see how adjusting the shutter speed affects the result of the image. The faster the shutter speed, the sharper the image you're going to get. Any questions? Nope. All right. Thanks for watching and have a great day.